I am hanging out here with my friend, Andrew McIntone from Blue Tusker. And we're talking about listing optimization for Q4. And before you sign off, wait, because we're going to give you, because you're like listing optimization, boring. You need to know what you need to do for Q4 specifically. So we have some special offers for you today, not only to attend the Q4 Summit that we have coming up that Andrew's going to be speaking at, but also to save on your listing optimization if you don't want to execute these tips on your own. So we're excited to talk about the top five listing optimization tips for Q4. Andrew, welcome. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you? I would love to. Thank you for having me. And I completely agree. Listing optimization is very boring, even for me, even though we do it all the time, but it is a necessary evil. My name is Andrew Maftone. I am the founder and CEO of Blue Tusker. I've been in the e-commerce industry for a little over 15 years now and started in the Amazon space. So I basically grew up with Jeff, at least that's how I feel. Uh, <laughs> and I am super excited to be a part of this one. Uh, and I get to tackle making listing optimizations not boring. And the whole reason I wanted to do this talk was because I knew, I, you know, we talked about in the beginning, like, what are the options? What do we want to chat about? And the reason I wanted to talk about this is mainly because the the aspect of what I really dive into seems to be completely untouched by most Amazon sellers because they tend to really stay in the Amazon bubble. And I like to help them expand outside of that world. And that's what I'm super excited to get into. Yes. So at the summit. So before we get into our top five tips for listing optimization, which is a value add today for all of our watchers and listeners, but at the summit itself, you're going to be giving a special talk all about traffic and sales optimization. But tell us a little bit more about your talk at the summit. So basically what I wanted to talk about was a majority of Amazon sellers, and I would comfortably say like 95% of them, do all of their work and all of their focus is on fighting the Amazon algorithm and doing everything they can to rank better on Amazon. Duh, makes the most sense, black and white. It's pretty obvious. However, what they always seem to forget is that you can also rank your listing very, very well on Google. So there is a whole nother audience where you don't have to make a new page. You don't have to do anything different. You, well, you got to do something different, obviously, because that's what I talk about. But it's a little bit of an adjustment where you can actually make the al Amazon algorithm happy and the Google algorithm happy, which if you make the Google algorithm happy, you bring in more organic traffic, you make the Amazon algorithm happy. So it's a great way to make everyone super happy and improve your organic rankings and fight these ridiculous CPCs that are getting out of hand. I love that. You know why? Because I have been doing the same thing Ever since I started doing listing optimizations and copywriting, I was doing it from a perspective of knowledge that over 60% of Amazon's external traffic comes from Google. And so I always start my keyword research and stuff on Google, but why I'm so excited to watch your talk and hear from you and learn from you is because I want to learn the nuggets that I don't know. <laughs> I know a lot about Google and optimizing for Amazon, but I bet I'm going to learn a ton from you. So I'm stoked about that. That's so awesome. So today I asked Andrew to come and give the audience just some tips for listing optimization because his company, Blue Tusker, is also sponsoring our Q4 Mastery Virtual Summit coming up September 20th and 21st. You guys can head over to amazingathome.com forward slash Q4 and you can get your ticket and we're going to give you some coupon codes today so that you can save 50% off of your ticket, um, but you can head over there. But um, we, are, I asked Andrew to come on today just to give us some overall listing optimization tips because Blue Tusker also has a special offer for listing optimization for everybody who comes to the summit. So we're going to cover that offer as well today. But let's cover the top five tips for Q4 listing optimization. Which tip should we start with, Andrew? What's our number one tip? So tip number one, relative to what I had just mentioned, right? Everyone does a lot of different uh, research behind, you know, uh, whether you're using like a Helium 10 or a Data Dive or Jungle Scout or whichever one you're using, they always do all this research on what is necessary from an Amazon perspective. Well, what they always seem to forget 
is that there's a whole other search engine out there that your listing can rank for, which is obviously Google. So what we always suggest doing is not only leveraging that Amazon data, but also leveraging your Google data. And the reason behind that is because there's a common misconception. I'm not the one who wrote it. Don't yell at me because every time I say this, I get yelled at. A plus content, the front end of your A plus content is, is not indexed by Amazon's algorithm. Your product description is, that's covered. Your alt text, the front end of your A plus content is indexed by Google and it affects the Google algorithm. Amazon does index it. And it obviously helps people with disabilities and things like that, but they don't put it into account when they put it into a product ranking. But from a Google perspective, they do take everything that's on the listing. So we actually will take all of that, that all of that Amazon data and all of that Google data, merge the two of them and make sure that we're adjusting copy and keyword targeting that we need to do so that Google can actually help increase the ranking as well. So while we're looking at where we stand in certain rankings on Amazon, whether it's we're tracking BSR or certain keywords we want to be ranking for, we also track the exact same keywords on Google to figure out how we can adjust to make sure that we're showing there as well. And I think that that is is number one, the most underrated thing that a lot of sellers just aren't doing. Wow. You're tracking your keywords on Google as well as Amazon. So that's your first tip is to do your keyword research, not only on Amazon, but also for Google and then track those just like we track our ranking for keywords. Now, why... I have to ask a follow-up question here. I'm not going to yell at you because <laughs> I kind Go of for it. <laughs> I have to ask a follow-up question. Um, I'm kind of setting you up for success here because why? What some people might be wondering is why would I rank for keywords on Google with just an organic Amazon listing without even? running ads or anything, why would Google rank me for those keywords? So Google and Amazon's algorithm work in a very, very similar fashion. They both want really what's actually just best for the user. Amazon wants what's best for the customer. They want to make sure that the first products they're showing, they're right, they're uh, set up really well. They've got great reviews. They've got great sell through. They know that if a certain person searches a certain thing and they purchase that top product, they're going to have a better experience. Hence why they're number one, not because they shoved 5,000 keywords into the bullet points. Google wants the exact same thing with the exclusion of it's not always about purchases. It's just about actually getting someone to find the results that they're looking for. So on Amazon, if you're actively searching for a tablecloth or something, the first couple things you're going to want to find are exactly what you need to purchase. And Google wants the exact same thing. So if you're searching for a specific tablecloth on Google, you want to see what you can do to get your listing to be up there. The nice thing is that Amazon's domain authority is already like a 99 or something like that. It's really not getting any better, but you also have a page authority. So when your listing starts, it's like a new page on the internet. It's got to get its own rankings. So after a while, when you start to do your own SEO stuff, which is basically what my whole talk is about, like not just the keyword side, but how you can actually do off Amazon SEO work to improve your on Amazon rankings. If you actually start to do that, the page authority of your listing will start to improve, which brings you up the organic ranking in Google. So that's why you can start to see it because yeah, you want to be number one on Amazon, but could you imagine if you're number one on Amazon and number one on Google for basically the same terms, you're going to get it's just going to feed itself. Wow. Okay. You've given me so much homework and we're only through the first tip. <laughs> so I try. That's, it makes sense. I love it. And I'm going to double check. I'm going to use all my keyword tools and I'm going to double check some listings. I'm excited about that. <laughs> um, and I hadn't thought about that aspect of the indexed keywords for A plus content from the Google side. So now the nerd in me totally wants to test that out. I'm excited. Okay, tip number two. What's the second thing we should do? Tip number two, I'd like to think is a relatively common thing. However, I believe that, especially if you're the business owner, you're an e-commerce seller yourself, you, uh, you're a little bit too deep in it. So it's tough to answer, but you really should be writing for the consumer, not for the algorithm. Too many people will go and do their keyword research and want to shove every single keyword that they find into every bullet point because I want to rank for everything. I think that I should be number one for every single page on Amazon, no matter what my product is, completely inaccurate. 
if you actually want to improve and you actually want to cater to the Amazon algorithm, you actually want to not cater to the algorithm. It sounds ridiculous, but if you write to your consumer and you make your copy that much easier to understand and it's the brand voice is in the right area for who your customer is. So you got to know your customer profile. Who's your customer? What mood are they in when they're shopping? Why are they looking for it? Are they looking for it for themselves or for someone else? And you have to write that copy to cater to that person at that time. Yes, you still need to use your keywords, but you don't need to use 500 of them. The average person has the uh, attention span of a goldfish. So to sh shove like two or three sentences into your bullet points just because you want to use a bunch of keywords doesn't make any sense. If you actually can make it very legible, but still make sure you're using your keywords and you can make it easy to understand, the consumer can make a decision faster, which means they're going to convert faster, which means you're going to get more reviews, which means you're going to go up in your organic ranking. So if you actually cater to writing to the consumer and put the customer first, which is all Amazon actually wants, you then in fact will be catering to the algorithm. So when you write copy, write for your cut, worry about the customer. Don't worry about Amazon. Okay. I think, like you said, there's a balance, right? Because yeah. we don't want to keyword stuff. Neither algorithm likes that. Not Amazon's, not Google's. We don't want to keyword stuff. My rule of thumb for folks is pick two. So I say two keyword phrases intact in each bullet point. But I always tell people, write your listing first. Don't like forget about keywords. Write the listing first to your consumer, connect with the customer through that copywriting, like really write a great listing and then go back through your keyword list and add it. Every time you mention this thing about Bob, look at one of your keyword that's relevant, that makes sense there and plug it in. You might have to change the sentence a little bit, but overall your tone will be better versus a lot of people, they'll just take this long keyword list and they'll go, okay, exactly. how do I fit this into bullets, right? So I always just draft the listing first, forget about the keywords, just think about the customer, what they want, you know, draft it first and then go back to your keywords because those are important for the search engine to find you. But we're not just stuffing, like sometimes you see these titles and it's just like stuffing, 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 right? Um, which I know on Google, you can actually get penalized for that with the algorithm. So yep. I think it's important. Um, I, on Amazon, I think you can also um, get in trouble for keyword stuffing, especially if, you know, the customer is turned off and they're not, they're not yeah. staying on, on the listing. Um, very cool. Okay. Um, tip number three. Tip number three is relatively self-explanatory. Um, it's one of the things that it's a very common rule and everyone already knows this. However, I still find people are extremely guilty of it. Uh, it kind of goes back to tip number two, which is basically we're a little bit too deep in it ourselves sometimes. And so we think that the consumer needs to know this. They need to know this. They need to know this. So we shove a ton of copy. My biggest tip for tip number three is very standard, which is mobile friendliness, right? big, bold, clear copy in your product imagery and your A-plus content. Most people are visual shoppers. The average consumer, when they shop on Amazon, obviously the first thing they'll see on the on the main page is your, your main product, but then they click into your images and they start sliding through. So if there's information you want them to see on there, it's obviously good to have your call outs, infographics, size charts, that kind of thing. Most of them are starting on their phone though which means you need to be writing to that aspect on your phone. And if it's not legible on mobile, it is a process and it looks horrible. And it's the same thing from A plus content. I'm a big fan of very heavily designed A plus content. I like it to be very big and bold and, and visual because most people are visual shoppers, but you can't shove an entire paragraph worth of information in there because on mobile, it's, it's completely unlegible. And if you use the A plus content aspect where you can put the copy outside of it, it actually looks like a big paragraph because it condenses it. So you're scrolling through the whole thing and it doesn't look good that way either. So big, bold, clear, straight to the point copy in your product imagery and your A plus content always improves conversion rate. That is so important. I completely agree with you. One of the things about A plus content that drives me nuts is that you can't zoom. Mm -hmm. You can zoom in on a picture on your mobile phone when you're um, clicking through the main images, but you cannot zoom when you're in A plus content. 
So I'm always like, okay, I can't read that. What does that say? What is that? And I'm like, I'm doing this on my phone and I can't make it work. Right. And so that's why it's so important. Like Andrew says here, you know, to make sure that it's big and bold and part of the image, because when we create a plus content and we just have this big blob of text, nobody's going to read it. Number one. And number two, you're not doing anything in that case to connect with the customer. People are visual, right? Buying buying is a psychological thing. They need to feel connected with that purchase or feel like they're getting some benefit out of it. And they're not going to want to read this huge thing. And I think just bringing it up on mobile is great. The other thing that I love to do in my infographics, um, and you guys are getting tips from Andrew and from Amy today. <laughs> um, I like whenever I, one. Yeah, whenever I have a text call out in an in infographic, I love to add an icon next to it because the I or the human brain is curious. So it wants to know what does that icon mean? And so if you have like, let's say you write dishwasher safe, for example on an image, right, of a tablecloth or something. You have dishwasher safe. And okay, that's just text on an image. I might just kind of scroll over it with my eyes because I'm, you know, a human and that's an image I'm looking at. So I'm just focused on what's in the image. But if I actually put a little icon of a dishwasher there, then my eye goes, wait, wait, what's that? Oh, dishwasher safe. Okay. So it's just one of those things that infographics call out a lot better when you don't just put the text, you actually have a little icon there um, because people will actually read then what your text is um, there. I agree. Good call. I'll put in my notes. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, we're rolling right along here. We're on tip number four. Tip number four is every marketer's dream. Uh, A-B test everything. It's so straightforward. It, it's pretty obvious. Um, you know, you get a lot of people that will uh, want to do this color on their listing, or they might want to use this image, or they might want to use this image. And they, they it's always these different things. And A-B testing on Amazon, you can do it with A+, plus product images, not so much. So I'm a big fan of using stuff like uh, PicFu or something like that and being like, let's actually see. Let's actually get some results from it. There's way too much speculation around let's try this, let's try this, let's try this, or I want this, but like there's no proof around what your customer wants. A, B testing, everything, 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 everything that you possibly can. I love that tip. How do we, how do we A plus, or sorry, A plus, how do we A, B test on Amazon? Uh, On Amazon, obviously there is the functionality behind the A plus content. So you can A-B test which A-plus content you want, that kind of stuff. You can switch that kind of stuff out. Um, Otherwise, I'm a big fan of market research. If you do have the ability to do stuff off Amazon to be able to get that kind of information for like product images, or even if you wanted to do it from a copy perspective, there's a ton of different uh, platforms out there that can do like your outsourced marketing research. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Amazon has a bunch of stuff built in. Um, So why not? Some of it's hit or miss, especially like if it's in beta, um, but it's worth a try and it's pretty easy to do. You know, you can change a color on a main image and, you know, yeah. try out both and very good. And Amazon has built in um, a plus content experimenting too. So we have no excuse. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Over to tip number five. Tip number five. Uh you know, this one's always really interesting because every time we do a listing optimization, I'm like shocked that this is always the case. Use every single one of the attributes that you possibly can in the back end. All of that information is going to be showcased on the front. It's part of the questions that your consumers ask. It's so, in some cases, it's things that are indexed that are relevant based on certain search terms that are being used. There's too many times you get the standard stuff. You have your title, bullet point, product description, you know, your keywords in the back end, your product imagery, your A plus content, that kind of stuff. But then what about all of the other attributes in the back end? There's an entire like, there's like seven or eight pages or something on Amazon. And I always go into a listing and go, wow, there's only like two of these are actually filled out. Go in the back end, 
take every little piece of information that you have about your product and make sure you're leveraging all aspects of what Amazon is providing you. They give it to you for a reason. So you need to leverage it, go into the back end and make sure that you're filling out all of the attributes that you possibly can. And that's number five. Yes, that's so important. I was just in Fiji at um, at an event, an e-commerce event, and Ben mm -hmm. Weber was there and he was talking about how his listings were just not um, indexing, right? They just weren't working anymore. And these were like best sellers and his sales were just so down and he was using, um, you know, uh, lots more advertising, really nothing was making a difference. And he had a SaaS rep that he was actually able to get on a call with. And they told him that he was missing these attributes in his listing. And he was like, what attributes? And they sent him this whole list. And he was like, how would I have known that as a seller? Like how, <laughs> you know? And um, so then we learned that you can actually go into your listing quality dashboard and you can click on the add uh, attributes in bulk and it'll It'll download a spreadsheet for you and show you all the attributes that you're missing in your listing. And you guys, I did a TikTok video about this. So if you aren't following me on TikTok, follow me. Amazing at home. Um, but you can download that spreadsheet and you can up, update all of the attributes. And he did that. And all of his listings went back to the ones that he was having issues with, went back to normal sales and then some, like they've been improved after that. So and sure enough, I downloaded that because my listings are old, you know, I've been selling for a little while and uh, they need updating. Maybe I should take advantage of Blue Tusker's offer. You guys can update things for me. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so I downloaded that that bulk uh, attributes edit spreadsheet. And sure enough, like I was missing stupid things like it was like material type. But that's the kind of stuff that I could have been People search for that in search. For. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's such a good tip. Okay. Well, is there anything else you wanted to show us today? No. Come to my talk. Watch that. <laughs> yes. So speaking of I do Andrew's have an example. Talk, I know, I know. Speaking of Andrew's talk, let's let's talk about it. Um Andrew is gonna have an amazing talk along with so many other awesome speakers. But if you guys want to save half off your ticket. We have a live access pass where you can attend live. And then we have an all access pass where you can also attend live, but you get the replay for up to a year on the course platform on our website. So you can save 50% off of either of those tickets at amazingathome.com forward slash Q4 using the coupon code Andrew Q4, the number four, not spelled out for Andrew Q4 at checkout. Um, and join us for the summit. And oh, by the way, if you need help with your listing optimization, if you want Andrew to optimize your listing, if you want his amazing company, Blue Tusker, thank you, Blue Tusker, for sponsoring the Q4 Mastery Summit. That's why we can offer tickets for less than the cost of a Starbucks. Um, <laughs> but make sure you guys click on, when you're at amazingandhome.com forward slash Q4, click on the Blue Tusker logo you're going to get 25% off a listing optimization, including A plus content. They don't just optimize the text. They optimize the whole thing. And they're not just optimizing you for Amazon. As you've learned today, they're optimizing you for Google. So knock both out the park and then come learn from Andrew at the Q4 Summit and learn how you can do even more of that. You can pour even more gasoline on that fire there. And um, and get it done. Did I did I miss anything, Andrew? I don't think so. I think you got it all. Okay, awesome. Nailed it. And Andrew has some pretty cool things that he's going to be also giving away for all the people who are coming to the summit. So those links again, amazingathome.com forward slash Q4. Use code Andrew Q4 to save 50%. And while you're there on that page, click on the blue Tusker logo to save 25% off your listing optimization by Blue Tusker. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Andrew, for being here and uh, teaching us all these amazing things that I'm now going to go try out and test and tweak. <laughs> and we'll see all of you at the Q4 Summit. Have a great day. See you there.